Loretta, what do you say? You don't have a book to hide yourself. Yes. You don't have to hide yourself. <laughs> you're not. You're not gonna hide. But you know, this is this is the way. As we were talking earlier this morning, this is the way the raccoon had its front feet really crossed as a just like a human. It wasn't like this. It was like this. The raccoon. And it was, it, he intimidated you. It could have been a sheep, but the, the, the raccoon intimidated you. It did not intimidate me. It just gave me something really to to connect with. Well, well, tell us there was something. Very well, the <laughs> raccoon didn't just appear because it, what, what was it? A gopher? What was it? A groundhog? What was? What was? What was? What was? What was? What was messing with your home out here in lovely New Brunswick, Somerset, New Jersey? A groundhog. A groundhog. Yeah. So, what tells the story? What happened? A groundhog has made its home right at the front door. And it startles people when they, you know, approach the front door. It's just not, you know, what I would prefer mm -hmm. when people come up. So I, I wanted it to move. So the trap was set for it, but instead a raccoon went in there after the, after an apple that was put in the trap. And so the next morning, you know, as you know, they're nocturnal animals. The next morning there it was, helpless in the small enclosure <laughs> and it was it, it pleaded with me it looked me in the eye and said what are you going to do about this <laughs> and um, i just decided that you know it could go it wasn't what i was trying to catch and, and not only that i have decided just to discourage the, the groundhog from living there. I don't want to catch it either. I just want it to move on somewhere else, which is the best thing. And all of this happened over a short amount of time. I'd say maybe maybe 10 minutes or so, 10 or 15 minutes. But the people that it, deal with this stuff came. Yes, yes, they came. They came to take the animal away that had been caught, you know. But, you know, it didn't work out that way. It all flowed very nicely. And, um, the, the good, uh, one of the best benefits out of that encounter was it made the spirit of David and Michael immediately appear, and, I, and we connected. Both really, spirits. Both, uh, simultaneously. And what did you hear? What did you hear them say? The absolute approval of my <laughs> my decision. What, what do you mean approval? Did they nod? What, what did they talk? What? You did the right thing, Mom. They said you did the right thing, Mom. Yes. I can quote it verbatim, <laughs> or either Ma, you did the right thing. I forget which, which it was. When they say Ma, would you, would, people may not know who you are, who David and Michael are. Would you, would you? David and Michael are my sons. David the older, Michael the younger. But they're they they they're going. They're only here in spirit now. They're here in spirit now. But I think about them all the time on a daily basis and God, my creator, gave me a way to stay connected with them. I know it sounds maybe a little unusual, but when I think about them, I don't think of them as the age they were when they died. Wait, 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 what age were they when they died? What, what, not age, but what year? Um, David in 1987, Michael in 1994, and so now David would be 61 and Michael would be 57. Actually, August 24th is Michael's birthday and he would be 57. And I think of them at that age. And and, and the reason being is that spiritually they've been with me through all those years, you know. Mm -hmm. They are they are no longer the young men that they were, but that they have... I can't describe it, what had happened, but I guess it's because I've continued to think it, to connect with them spiritually. But you, so you were with them long, but but but, but also, but Henry left you too. But yes, in, 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 in 1968. Yeah, so they actually grew up in, in a way without their yes, father. Yes, yes, yes. Now, um, but they stayed with you. Yeah. Okay. So what 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 kind of things throughout the years? I mean, when you say they stayed with you, I mean, do they? What what tell us? This? Well. Um, I thought to think about them, how would they would respond to everything that has happened over these past years, over these years since 1987 on, you know, politically and not only politically, but, you know, other things in the culture and in life in general, you know. Well, I've, I've known you since uh, 1970. 75, some, mm -hmm. something like that, 74, maybe 74, 74, I think 74 I yeah, we first yeah. came to the radio program. Yeah. 
but in all these times, you're, let me say this, I'm not trying to, uh, I have to say it this way, I, I may have told you this before, I've actually known, I can tell you three, three people in my life that have demonstrated pure love, when I say pure love, the, the human embodiment, the anthropomorphic picture of love, right, one was Mr. Pizan in Ohio, when I was in the service, okay. never, never, a woman, uh, um, he was he was he was in a lab. He was doing something in, in a lab when I was a lab technician. Well, right in Ohio, job. I never knew you were in Ohio. Yeah, right past the Air Force Base. That, that's okay. where he was. He was oh, a civilian right. worker in there. Oh, okay. Mr. Pizan, credible person. Okay. The second, when I got out of the Air Force, and I was working at the Princeton Medical Center. Well, it's medical center, it was Princeton Hospital at the time. Yes. A woman named Kathy. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Pizan was a black guy. If you want to say mm -hmm. it that way, Kathy was a white person. Mm -hmm. And then this was before. This was right before I really. Um, maybe yeah, right before I really met you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were the third person that, to me, demonstrates pure human humanity and love. You know what I mean? You're so very I, kind. I, well, very I'm, is, I'm, I'm very, I'm very telling the truth. Yeah, but right? get, getting back to your time at, at the Princeton Hospital, <laughs> I remember one thing you said: if you want to stay well, stay out. Stay out. <laughs> stay <laughs> well. <laughs> That's true. It's true, um, you know. But, but let me get back to the thing. So when you, when you say they stay with you, I mean, yeah. is it is it is it a, what do you is it a force you feel? Is it I don't want to say I don't, what do you mean by that? It's a force I feel. It's a c c communication. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't. You know, like after they had been gone for you know maybe close to a year. Well, they didn't die at the same time, but I mean. Um, I felt things slipping away, and I had to find a way to not let that happen. You know, I didn't did did not want to let go. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, maybe don't understand it. But I belong to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and one thing we all do have in common: it's not an organization you choose to belong to, but people, if, it's, if you really love someone, they never leave you. It stays with you. And and um, many people have a similar experience where they have held on to the memory of their children in many different ways. Um, you know, it's, it's not unique. So b b both of them committed suicide, but yes. the, 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 is that in your organization? Are there many people that have uh, multiple um, More than you would imagine, yes. I remember when, when I first joined the organization, just David had passed away, and I, somebody was in the group where they had lost, I think, two brothers or something like that. Not at the same time, but I just thought, oh, that, oh my God, how horrible. This would never happen to me. And um, sure enough, it did. And I gave a presentation down at... Um, what is the sister college to? No, it's not. It's not Selma in Atlanta. It's oh, Clark so Atlanta. It's Clark. Clark. I gave a presentation when there used to be an organization called the National Organization for People of Color Against Suicide, mm -hmm. but that dissolved, you know, um, some years ago. But anyway, I used to belong to that, and I gave presentations, which I thought I would never be able to do to get up in front of people and talk about it. And at that time, I had lost both of my sons, and um, you know, I talked about how you know life had dealt this particular circumstance to me. And um, one of the founders of the National Organization for People of Color Against Suicide founded it when one of his sons died, and then the second one took his life. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, of course, I knew about it, and I called him right away, you know, we connected right away, because in answer to your question, does it happen, unfortunately it does, you know. Um, I have always felt in my heart that Michael handled his situation because he always looked up to his brother, even though they didn't always get along, he always looked up to him. I think Michael chose that. One of the reasons that cho he chose that was because David did. You know. Well, I knew them both, and uh, and and uh, David to me was just fine. Uh, Michael, I was very surprised. I was mm -hmm. very surprised 
You he wasn't surprised about David? Not that I was, I was surprised. I wasn't, it wasn't expected, so I wasn't, oh, you, know, okay. you know what I mean? I okay. wasn't, wasn't like, you know, yeah. I mean, I knew, it's not like we hung out. Yeah, <laughs> you I know, know, like I that, know. You know what I mean? It's I like, know. I just knew. It, it yeah. wasn't just yeah. like that. Yeah. And, you know, he was, he was old enough, you know, that you could talk, you could yeah. communicate, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. But I want. To, I don't want to linger on this. I want to. I want to. I want to just. Just actually. Yes. Know, I want to actually stop. But okay. I want to. This. Let me ask you a, a, a more political question. Sure. Do you think because of the times that, that any kind of pressure, societal pressure, uh, not fami not family pressure, but any societal pressure was on them? What What do you think was happening? Um. I think that. Um, in David's case, it was um, not only his personal life, but just the condition of the world in general mm -hmm. that he saw the very negative um, forces happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you should ask me that because um, unfortunately, David was aware of things that were developing, and um, he it kind of brought him down very much. So he he didn't have a whole lot of he had a lot of despair about things. You know. But they were, I think both of them were pretty close. I was yeah, were pretty close to nature to me. I mean I exactly, know. exactly. That's the problem. They saw. David saw climate change a long time ago. In fact, sometimes I say to myself, if David were alive now, if David were in the, you know, not in, in the spirit, if he were here now to witness things that were happening, how it would affect him. Both of them were very, very much connected to nature. Look, looking out here at my backyard, I remember at one time the grass was quite high. They didn't want it cut because they knew that there were all kind of insects and stuff that they had made their home in there. <laughs> they could care less about, um, you know, grooming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> manicure the on the lawn. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun for them to to have all that going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but. Um, that's just a little. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But we all, we all of us enjoyed nature. Mm -hmm. All three of us. Well, I still do. You know, don't want to. You know, I, I, again, I want to stop here at some point. But I want to. There's one other thing. Like I said, I've known you for for quite a while. But one of the things I met I met Gordon Parks through you because I mean you've had many kind of. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, what are you about the UN with that big yeah, old thing in yeah, there? Right, yeah. Right. yeah, Mr. Fox. Right? Yeah. Well, I say, hey, Mr. Fox. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> but um, it's weird because I also know a woman that was the personal secretary to to Betty Shabazz when she was going through her, her, yes. uh, her dissertation, mm -hmm. with Dr. Betty Shabazz. And I was wondering, you know, how, how, this is off topic in a way, mm -hmm. but I just want to, do you, do you, Okay, I don't know what I'm saying, but do you think, because you've lived so long, do you mm -hmm. think because of their spirit, they guide you to certain things, like like to hang out with them, you know, to be with Gordon Park, to be with certain people. You've met a lot, of, the, the Toni Morrison just passed, you yes. know, and you yes. said, yeah, I'm just saying. And what, I, when I heard that she died, you know, it came on the news right away, I thought to myself, I thought I would be seeing her again at some event. I just, this is... This wasn't supposed to happen. That was the first thought that came to my mind, which was not not a realistic thought. But I didn't know that she had a brief illness. Had I known that she had a brief illness, I might have said, "Oh well, I hope it comes out all right. I hope she recovers and everything." But I understand that she died from complications of pneumonia. But but I don't know what her brief illness was. But anyway. Um, when I heard that she had died, I thought, said, this was not supposed to happen, because just a few weeks ago I had seen the documentary, Pieces of Me, you know, that documentary about her I haven't life. seen it yet. No. It's very good, you know, I hope that it gets, you know, released again, that it's, you know, playing. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all, that's all I want to really talk about uh, right now. I don't want to get into anything uh, right now, if you don't mind. Uh, but thank you for this time. Um, <laughs> I, I just, well, it's just extraordinary well, to me. I enjoyed yeah. chatting with you, Anthony. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> it's more than a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>